if you are new to our channel, please like, subscribe, hit that little bell notification. It really does help us out. Last time we talked all about what happened the night aliens invaded Washington and buzzed the White House. This week we're going to be talking about what happened next and why we think it happened in the first place. What? Let's let's assume. Go on. For one, that it, they were UFOs and they were aliens on those UFOs. Mm -hmm. They were they were some sort of object intelligently controlled and i think it's a fair assumption because not only was it seen on radar it was actually seen with public eyeballs as well <laughs> you know yeah, so it was seen exactly. by multiple witnesses so when you've got technology acting as a witness and also then corroborating human witnesses that are both saying that they're seeing something metallic traveling at incredible speeds yeah. it's then much harder to dispute the radar evidence as and as um, a misidentification of some kind of atmospheric uh, condition or weather condition. Yeah. All right. So 31st of July, 1952, um, because this has been in the newspapers for so long, the, the army basically decided they had to make a statement. So this Major General Samford, John A. Samford, um, if you're even remotely interested in UFOs, you've seen this interview or his, this in his images at some point. He says they've had between one and two thousand reports. <laughs> That's vague as hell. <laughs> um, we've had we've had one and many. Um, he says the bulk have been explained. You know, it's swamp gas and balloons and things. Yeah. Um, but there's a certain percentage. Where, again, he doesn't say what that certain percentage is of between one and two thousand credible observers of incredible, incredible things, things, which is a great line. It um, is a great line. Yes, it's um. Yeah, very well, very well constructed, actually, that, that statement. This is, um, there's no pattern to um, make an analysis. So they're basically saying there's no pattern to it, so we don't know what's going on, so we shouldn't worry about it. No. But this reminds me of when we did a video not long ago about um, Cumbria and UFOs, and the MOD released all of their information about UFOs, um, and they basically said... Um, there's nothing, there's no credible risk to defence, so we're not yep. worried about it. Yeah. Um, that's not the same as saying there aren't UFOs, though. No. Yeah, just that, that we're not worried. And this is way, as he has put in, that there's no pattern of purpose or consistency um, to warrant a threat to the US, is the way John A. General Sanford. It, it just comes to me as it's being very careful of the wording that they're using. You know? They are. Yeah, 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 definitely. So if we assume then for a minute that these sightings over Washington was UFOs, mm -hmm. intelligently controlled objects oh, um, mean, yep. over the capital of the country that has recently become probably the most dominant superpower on the planet. Yes. Pre-World War Two, it was probably the British Empire. Post-World War Two, completely America. Yeah. Um, with the most powerful weapon on the planet as well. Yes, you know, with with they got nuclear weapons at this point. So if you wanted to make a show as a as another species from another planet that they were unhappy with, perhaps the hostility that we were presenting in the in the in, in, mm. in the weapons used and the death, you know, the deaths of yeah of countless people, um, you'd probably what you'd you'd swarm the White House, which is the mm. building which represents the power of the strongest country in the world at that point yeah yeah kind of all makes sense doesn't it you know basically yeah. trying to say well you may be the most powerful on your planet but we can still sit here in, in our craft and just sit here doing yeah. nothing and you can't touch us so who's really got the power have another think <laughs> I, I honestly think it's, it's if you think of it from like a statement point of view it's just, it mm. really is a political statement they've yes. come in at the weekend right so again they understand our calendar if you like They've come yes. in at the same sort of time. They've then left it a week and they've then hit us again. You have to wonder what, again, like you said, what were they trying to say? I think we made this argument when we were talking about the Battle of L.A. Yeah. That it was like very much a, they just sat off the coast, yeah. absorbed all that gunfire and went, what you got? Yeah. You know, do as you, I, I feel like this was a do as you're told statement. Almost. It's almost, yeah, it's almost like you are the children, behave. Yeah. I think we should probably all hail our alien overlords at this point and just make sure that they understand that our allegiance is to them and um, that, that yeah, we'll do whatever you want. Well, isn't it strange that all religion has you looking up to the sky for God? 
Yes. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that is true. That we think the heavens are well, the heavens. So. Well, yeah, but the heavens are just the cosmos, and God is God is probably just a misinterpretation of the plural of gods and the gods mm. that used to visit us from the skies, from the cosmos, yeah. the gods from the heavens above. Oh, we're getting back into the Anunnaki. And stuff, yeah, but it's, it, 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 I, yeah. I just think it's all it really to me. It just yeah, it all it all ties in so well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't think that I don't think UFOs have only been visiting us since 1942. I think they've uh, always no. visited us. Um, it just felt to me like this. Well, there's cave paintings that date back 30 or 40 thousand years that look like they definitely. appear to depict astronauts in um, space suits, humanoid yeah, beings yeah. in space suits, and you're going back 40, 50 thousand, so 30, 40 thousand years, I think. Um, yeah. So you, yes, they're prevalent they, throughout the whole of history. Yeah. They, they drew they, what they saw, didn't they? At the end of the day, they drew what they saw. Many, fam- many, many, many famous paintings have um, UFOs in them. Yeah, in the backgrounds and things. Yeah, yeah. Isn't the Mona yeah. Lisa got one? I think Mona Lisa's got one in the background. I think Mona Lisa. And there's several, isn't there, that, have, that, that they believe have objects in the sky. You would talk about you know, a lot of Indian culture and Indian history. I've got a lot of this. Objects. It's, no, it's nothing new. In, in e- Egypt, e- Egyptian history. <laughs> you know chariots of the fire and all these sorts of things as far as our history goes back and as far as the art that has survived we've got pictures of yeah. unidentified flying objects in the sky yeah but so in 52 though this i i do wonder i've always wondered whether there, there could be an influence in government by if 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 certain species were coming here i think some would come if you believe sort of like from that guy from the Disclosure Project, that there are several species visiting us potentially, um, then so I, I think they would come with different reasons. And it seems like the X-Files sort of um, reason for, for alien in- interaction in our government. And, and, and if that were to be true, I wonder if it's this was a statement that maybe the American government were resistant to what they were being told to do or not to do or whatever and this was a do as you're told statement. maybe maybe it's like that film you've ever seen jupiter ascending where you've yes, got that, yeah, seen that yeah. maybe mm-hmm. we're just literally are like a farm with this whole planet's a farm for like an alien mm-hmm. seed us and farming us and then they're gonna they're gonna harvest us for something it's they a bit need. harsh right it's a it, bit black it, it, it's it's possible well that was the x-files as well wasn't it i love the x-files um, yeah, it was a great series. I, I loved it as well. Such a mm. '90s series, though, wasn't it? The X Files. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Back when triangles were the big UFO, and then the stealth bomber came out, and they were, oh, that's what we were seeing. Let's go back to sources, <laughs> sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so for me, that that's I, I that's what it hits to me. This whole decade seems to be there was a lot of activity and a lot of interest, and yes. then it seems to have come to a halt or yeah. at least slowed right down at the well, end I, of 52. I think, yeah, the, the, after the, the incident in 52, I think the the American government probably made a much more of an active effort to start hiding anything UFO yeah. related from the public. I think that mm. event in 52 probably panicked the American population enough yeah. Because they still had the memory of the Battle of LA in 42. Roswell in 47. In 53, following this, because of the uproar, there was the Robertson panel. Right? Yes. So, um, um, chaired by this Robertson fella. Mm. Um, they reviewed the best cases from um, uh, Project Blue Book was one of their things. And their conclusion after um, reviewing these cases... I think they told Project Blue Book, do you think they gave him a pat on the back and said, well, a job well done? What their conclusion after reviewing these cases from Project Blue Book was, they told them to spend more time debunking cases and less time trying to investigate them. So they basically gave him a smack on the wrist and said, you're actually putting too much effort into finding out the truth. You need to just debunk them quicker. Mm, which is pretty much just cover it up and, uh, yeah, on to yeah. the next. Yeah, they recommended that government and the military should try to strip the UFO of special status they've been given and the aura of mystery they have unfortunately required. So that's basically saying we need to make UFOs less interesting. Yeah, 
people are too interested. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the mystery they have unfortunately acquired. But again, by saying which that you could argue within them saying, OK, well, this isn't a real thing. We need to try to get people off it because it's causing panic. Yep. Or you can say, but because of what they said just a minute ago, stop investigating them and start trying to debunk them more. That that is just them saying that we need to start hushing this up now. Where we need to we need to get people to look the other way. Yep. They are then concluded that the UFO phenomenon has no direct threat to U.S. national security. What they really mean by that conclusion is there has no direct threat to national security that we can do anything about. Yes. It's, I mean, they might be saying there's not a threat. They might be saying it's not a threat because we've already chatted to them. We know what they want. Well, uh, we can't do anything possible. about it, so it's not a threat to our national security. Well, there is there is some some conspiracy theories out there that say that um, in this after in this period in 1952 when uh, this occurred and and these UFOs swarmed the the White House for several weekends on the trot, and that was when first contact was made, and, and Eisenhower mm. was one of the ones to to make first contact with another another species so yeah. it's possible so maybe they did know yeah. that they weren't hostile anymore so technically they weren't lying because they did know their intentions because they sat down around a table and somehow conversed even mm-hmm. with the language barrier um with an alien species well so an alien species would know how to communicate with us yeah, reasonably it, quickly it, using yeah unfortunately though, there's not going to be a universal um uh, translator like in star trek though i think it would take a bit of time yeah. to figure out how to communicate between two different species if and they'd they're, been they're sort of hanging around us for a while, though, oh, that telepathic. There you go. And isn't that one of the big things that they say about greys is that they probably are telepathic? That's supposedly what they say, yes. They don't have mouths. They have large craniums. Um, so they, that would they maybe... thoughts into your head, yes. Yeah. Eliminate the need for for conversation. So, And I actually think it wouldn't be a two-way conversation either. It would be a, um, this is what we want and you're going to do it conversation personally but um so they recommended also this Robertson panel which i really like as well and this sounds really really threatening and mm-hmm. um, they concluded the uf um sorry they recommended a national education program to lower the public interest in the subject now that is a really nice way of saying we are going to set up a focused organized way to stop yep. people talking about UFOs. We are yes. going to, that is when the cover up started officially. Following this as well, in 1954, they decided to put penalties in place for any military personnel that report UFOs without permission. Um, the Air Force Regulation 200 2, which again put very severe penalties in place for any, any serving okay. military officer to um, discuss anything about UFOs or UFO sightings without permission, which again, bit dark Conversely why would today, they put regulations in it's now in the commercial commercial airlines pilots handbook of what to do yeah. if you uh, do spot a ufo which basically involves speaking to as few people about it as possible not really yeah. reporting it reporting it only to this one particular group yeah. that Juice will investigate logo, yeah, it um... on, on your behalf don't worry we'll, we'll do everything just forget yeah. about it just tell us about it and then forget you ever saw it it's all, um, yeah, it's all the Bigelow Aerospace, isn't it? You reported to Bigelow Aerospace, yeah. which is a private entity. What the hell is that about? But this Robertson panel report, UFO people and investigators knew it had happened. They refused to release it, and it only got released in full in 1966. Um, J. Allen Hynek, which is a name we know again from Operation Blue Book, did consult on the panel, but later criticised it, saying... It made the subjects of UFOs unrespectable for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. And it says he was basically talking about the amount of evidence that we lost because of this panel was yeah, and irretrievable. The, yes, and the, and the ridic- ridiculization of anything yeah. related to UFOs or um, alien abduction in the, in the years that came, 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 yeah, came back. I would say that that's more than 20 years. I would say it's still today that the yeah. US government actively has tried to ridicule this subject. Why would they do that if, it, if there wasn't something they didn't want us to talk about? Why would they spend so much effort making making the conspiracy nut a thing, you know, ridiculing yeah, exactly. conspiracy theory 
and the making fact, that a dirty fact, word. The fact that the CIA has a has a, has a, has a, has a program um, to to downplay the, the UFOs yep. um, it shows you all you need to know. The uh, Brookings Institute that commissioned that report after yep. they done the War of the Worlds over the radio and scared everybody again, thinking that an alien invasion was actually occurring when it was just yep. a a story being um, told over the radio. The Brookings Institute made a report saying that if that we did find evidence of uh, civilizations on other planets, um, other species, that we should probably hide it from the, the public because the yeah. public can't handle the truth. And that's we'll pretty panic. much where, uh, where the entire tagline from the X-Files was basically come from, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, if you think Again, about it's that it. thing of like, individuals are bright, but groups of people are thick. Mm. And, um, and we would panic. And there would be large sways the population that would panic um and you've also got the point like you made earlier that actually our government can never admit it to us anyway because if they don't have any control and they can't stop these invasion these these incursions into our airspace potentially at kidnappings and god knows what else they can never yeah. admit it because they'd be panic yep but the thing is we know there are ufos because the tic tac video came out and they admitted a few weeks ago weirdly nobody cared because of this slight pandemic they admitted a few weeks ago that the video is genuine it is real and they don't know what they were filming never never was it governments never miss a good uh, good good crisis it's when you yeah. slip a load of information out about other things because people don't pay much attention yeah how can they say that how can they admit that ufos are genuine and nobody notices have a worldwide pandemic going on at the same time. You really want to follow um, any other news that you can carefully because at the moment, because the mainstream media doesn't really report anything apart from no. coronavirus. Um, however, lots of things are going on. Lots of laws are being passed. Lots of things are changing. Um, yeah. you're, you're just not aware of it because you're being blinded by a, a pandemic that might turn out not actually to be even that much of a pandemic. It was a decade of UFOs and I... I believe possibly it was the decade when we all became servient to our avian ov- overlords our alien overlords i think i said avian overlords like the birds then mm-hmm. our alien overlords exactly. let's be honest though we know who's in charge really so i'd just like to take this moment to all hail our reptilian masters and um please don't eat me and just to end is the greatest simpsons quote ever <laughs>